These are not the best of times. Not yet four weeks in, his travel ban's been blocked, his national security advisor's been fired, and the questions about his links with Russia are piling up. And when the president is angry, the place he vents is on Twitter. And boy, did he let rip this morning. This Russian connection nonsense is merely an attempt to cover up the many mistakes made in Hillary Clinton's losing campaign. The real scandal here is that classified information is illegally given out by intelligence like candy. Very un-American. And on the reporting of this, the fake news media is going crazy with their conspiracy theories and blind hatred. But on Capitol Hill there's one central concern among senior Republicans and Democrats. It's the administration's links to the Russian government. The base issue is, uh, is, is getting to the bottom of what the Russian interference was and what the relationship was with associates uh, of the Trump effort. And so um, that is the big elephant in the room that uh, has got to be dealt with in the most appropriate way. It's the American people need to understand, we need to understand, and it needs to be dealt with quickly. In the midst of so much turmoil, a friendly face at the White House, the Israeli Prime Minister. At their news conference a short time ago, you wouldn't have guessed that it was the president who demanded General Flynn's resignation. Papers are being leaked, things are being leaked. It's criminal action, criminal act. And it's been going on for a long time, before me. But now it's really going on. And people are trying to cover up for a terrible loss that the Democrats had under Hillary Clinton. I think it's very, very unfair what's happened to General Flynn, the way he was treated, and the documents and papers that were illegally, I stress that, illegally leaked. Very, very unfair. But then on to the Middle East and this key policy question. Did America still support a two-state solution? So I'm looking at two-state and one-state, and I like the one that both parties like. I'm very happy with the one that both parties like. I believe that the great opportunity for peace comes from a regional approach, from involving our newfound Arab partners in the pursuit of a broader peace and peace with the Palestinians. And I greatly look forward to discussing this in detail with you, Mr. President, because I think that if we work together, we have a shot. There seems to be more common ground between these two men than the president is enjoying with some of his Republican colleagues. John. Well, John is in Washington for us now. How much pressure is President Trump under when it comes to Russia? Well, it's hard to avoid the conclusion, Sophie, that this is an administration that is reeling, if you like. I mean, Donald Trump found campaigning easy. He's finding governing a good deal more difficult. And you just look at the White House. It's understaffed. Within the White House, there seem to be rival factions. And we've heard Donald Trump there complaining about the hostility that he is facing from the media, from some of the government agencies that he says are leaking against him. You have now got Republicans on the Hill saying there needs to be an investigation to clear the air over links with Russia. So it's all very difficult. And um, just one other thing. You might remember there was that whole controversy about the travel ban. Donald Trump promised last week that we would see a revised executive order on Monday or Tuesday of this week. It is now Wednesday. We've heard nothing about it. And it seems that work at the White House just isn't getting done. As you saw, President Trump has been holding his first face-to-face -face talks with the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen, is here. You listened to what the two leaders had to say. What did you make of it? Well, first of all, they both hinted that there could be some kind of a wider Middle East arrangement because, Mr Netanyahu said, he had some new friends, Arab states, who shared his suspicions and Mr Trump's suspicions of Iran. So that's one thing that they both talked about and both emphasized, the hopes for a regional pact. How does this affect relations between Israel and the Palestinians? Well, uh, Mr. Netanyahu and his right-wing allies in, the, in the Israel, I think, were hoping for more or less a, a, a blank check from uh, Mr. Trump to do what they want. They haven't got that because he said that they're going to have to make concessions as well. 
But certainly I think that Netanyahu is hoping that this is going to be a way more fruitful relationship from his point of view than he ever had with President Obama. That was very awkward and frosty. And even with President Bill Clinton back in the 90s when Netanyahu was first prime minister. So this is all about a new start between those two countries. But, you know, as ever with the Middle East, it's going to be terribly complicated. And as for a two-state or one-state solution, some people think the most likely thing is no solution at all.